I'm Tanisha Arena, and you're listening to Unapologetic. We've been having conversations, a lot of conversations, difficult conversations about what we are seeing collectively in the world with the uh, police brutality and the destruction of black bodies. And if you are a black parent, especially if you have black sons, you've had the conversation, you know, with your sons about how to stay alive in this world and especially in the presence of police. Now, are white parents having to have these kind of conversations? No, but maybe it's time that they do have these kind of conversations. Not only that the destruction of black and brown bodies is not okay, but what their children should be doing and should not be doing so that black people can stay alive because that is a conversation. Um, when you're not having that conversation, when you're not talking about it, that's being complicit. That's going along with the status quo. If I have to teach my kids how to stay alive in the presence of yours, there's a problem. Can you teach your kids to not kill my kids? Can we have that conversation collectively in our communities, our white allies and supporters? Because Yes, these are hard conversations to have and they might be painful, but imagine when that's the life that you have to live. How do we build accountability? We teach responsibility to our young people who are going to grow up to become the adults who will be the officers, the lawyers, the judges, the first responders. These things are baked in. We can decide to put in some new ingredients so that we have a different outcome. And I'm asking you if that's the thing that you wanna do. Do you want to build something better than what we have? Because it's one thing to continue talking about what it is that we have and what we've baked in, but when are we going to start to change the recipe? I think today's a pretty good day to change the recipe, don't you? I think that white people can teach their kids that it's not okay to over-police Black people, to call the cops for things that just because they don't sit well with you, that doesn't make them a crime. I think white people can teach their kids that when you do things like that, it really does endanger the life of black and brown people. I think that we could all teach our kids to communicate and what that looks like. We can teach our kids about equality and equity and that the system that we have isn't a good one. Even if we benefit from it, it's not a good one because there are people who don't and there are people who get harmed. This is about humanity and how do we teach humanity? I think it's going to start with our young people because are they gonna grow up with the same notions that uh, black and brown people aren't human because we've had 400 years of dehumanization. So it's going to be a process to humanize black and brown people. It's the humanity that we deserve, but it's been denied. So teach your kids about humanity and what that looks like, about empathy about this world that we need to exist in together because if we don't, we're all going to perish. Nobody's gonna make it out of this alive, but what is the life that we're living going to look like? My life matters, black lives matter. We never said that all lives didn't matter, but if all lives mattered, why do we have the inequality that we see? Why do we have the different treatment that we see? If you say, oh, but I don't see color, I'm gonna push back and say, but I need you to see color and teach your kids to see it because then once they can see it, they can see the differences and call them out. So I need you to see it. I need you to open your eyes. I need you to pay attention. I need you to do your census. I need you to register to vote and I need you to go and vote. We're not talking about marrying candidates. This is not for forever, but it is about addressing the inequality and the terror that has taken place in our country. If we're going to say we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, let's do that. 